All right, this is Cody. Cody's Bait and Tackle, Warsaw, Missouri. Uh, I'm going to do a little short fishing report here. Pretty well. Catfish are on fire on Truman. Uh, Lake of the Ozarks got a pretty good catfish bite still going on. <clears throat> uh, as far as the crappie, they, they can't get any better of a bite right now. So I'm going to kind of, some of you guys that are limited to the bank fishing, uh, <clears throat> Limited, don't have boat access or live scope or any of that. I'm, I'm going to show you. I grew up fishing off the bank. Uh, I could go all winter long and catch crappie. I mean, any day during the winter, I could go somewhere and catch a lemon or crappie off the bank. <clears throat> so, I'm going to kind of try to help you guys figure out how to do that. Uh, as, as far as you can either go down below the dam in the dead water, throw a slip cork. Uh, there's several different areas, sometimes the harbor, uh, sometimes you can throw a slip cork, uh, three to five, six foot deep in there and catch them. Uh, it just kind of depends. You got to change your depth a lot. You've got to experiment. You've got to find what, what them fish want. Sometimes they'll want a little jig. Sometimes they'll want a big jig. Uh, right now the big thing is, uh, everybody's running live scope. So they're finding fish that are really shallow that normally people don't see. Uh, I've caught them fish on a slip cork before. That's nothing new. Uh, the old man I grew up slip cork fishing with that showed me how to do it. We, we used to sit down there in the snow and ice in the harbor, if it wasn't froze up, throw a slip cork a foot or two foot deep and catch crappie. Uh, it's just, it's always been like that. Uh, there's some of the bigger creeks up on Truman, you know, they're throwing a cork in right now, catching them a foot, two, three, four foot deep. Uh, out in deeper water, uh, just them fish are scattered all over. On the main lake, they're still catching them off the bluffs. Uh, minnows, jigs don't matter. They're they're catching them. They're in big schools. Same way with them fish that are up top. They're big schools. I posted a video on my Facebook here last week of the new new fish finder, uh, which my phone ran out of memory on me, so I I didn't get a real good video of it, so I didn't post it on YouTube. But I showed just massive schools of crappie that was in 10, 11 foot of water that was only down 3 to 8 foot deep. I mean, they, they wasn't down on bottom. They was easy to catch. They was scattered out looking for bait. They was feeding. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of show you guys here how I always rigged up my slip cork. It's, it's a real simple, real simple. Uh, this is actually my white bass rod. It, it's got i think 15 pound braid on it which is a little bit heavy I, I used to run either eight pound mono or i would run like 10 pound braid but i'm going to make this work just to show you guys so on my bobber this is just a regular cigar float this is a bigger size so i can put more weight on it sometimes you got to cast way out like in the dead water, you might have to cast out as far as you can possibly cast off one of them docks to catch them fish right now. Uh, so what I do, I take that cigar float, and I take a black marker, and I make rings around it. Now, I heat up, take my snap swivel, I heat it up, run it through the bottom. I don't, run, I don't like my line running through the cork. I like my cork to stand up perfectly straight up and down. So during the winter time, you get a lot of really, really light bites. So say here's your water level. A lot of the time, your big crappie, all it's going to do is raise that cork up just about that far and then go back down. And if you don't see that, you're going to miss it every time. I've sat right next to some good fishermen that wasn't used to fishing like that. They absolutely could not see the bites. Didn't matter what they did. I'd tell them you're getting bit. They wouldn't see it. So on that snap swivel, what I do, I take a pair of pliers. And I pinch that eye shut just enough my line will slide through it. So. I'm going to run that braided line right through that. And I've got somewhere here. Sorry, I ain't got nobody video. I'm in the shop by myself this morning. Uh, so. Part of the time you might not be able to see me real well. But I'll make sure you can see what I'm doing. On braid, I always double my line whenever I tie a knot with braid. Uh, some people don't. 
it's not necessary, but I I don't like my braid breaking. I like my mono breaking if I tie a mono leader. Some of you guys right now are probably thinking, why didn't I put my bobber stop on before my bobber? I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute. I just tie a regular fisherman's knot right there on that. <clears throat> as far as jig colors right now, from what I've seen, it does not matter. Some days are wanting pink, some days are wanting more white pearl colors. Uh, but pretty well, whatever you have faith in is what you want to use. So, I'm going to get me about a three foot piece of that eight pound mono right there. Just tie that onto the bottom of your swivel. That's going to give you your mono. Now, as long as you run six or eight pound mono, <clears throat> heavier main line, you should never lose your cork. Okay. This, this right here is one that most people struggle with. I put my top jig on just a looper knot. This is the same knot I use catfishing year round. Uh... If you're going to learn one knot for fishing our waters here or pretty well any lake or some guys on the rivers don't use it catfishing, but what I do, I flip that line and make an up, upside down loop to where the top, the one that's going down is in the middle. And then I twist my top and my middle lines together. This is real hard to see with this thin line, I'm sure, but... You can probably look this up online too. It's just, most people just call it a loop or not. You pull your bottom line through. I made that one pretty long, probably longer than what it needed to be, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it. That just gives you a loop there to, to put your jig on. Now, as far as jig color, like I said, it really don't matter. If I had to pick one color to throw year round on a jig head, it would be pink. I don't know why, but crappie absolutely love pink, especially during the winter time. That's always one of the really hot colors for me. And I just put that right through the eye and loop it back around to where that hook's loop or that jig head's looped on there. <clears throat> then I just tie that. Bottom jig on. There's what you got. That way that jig hangs off your line. There's the jig on the bottom. There's your cork. Slides up and down the line. You can set this cork anywhere from, you know, that deep. You know, that's probably 30 inches, maybe, 34 inches. You can set that anywhere from that deep all the way down to 20 foot deep. Uh, and I have ran a slip cork 20 foot deep, 25 foot deep up on Truman off some of these bluffs where you can walk down to. Little Tebow is one I used to always slip cork fish off of. Uh, really had good luck up there over the years. Uh now I will say if you're gonna if you're gonna slip cork fish in that deeper water like that, you gotta have a good long rod. You gotta have a 10 to 14 foot rod to get that hook set. When you're pulling that, when you've got to pull that line, you figure your line's at an angle like this. Your line's straight down from the cork. Your line's back to you. To get a good hook set in that deeper water, you you have got to have a longer rod. This one here, I'm just gonna rig it up for fishing down below the dam. About the deepest you'd fish down there would probably be. 
Uh, 14, 15 foot. I think I have fished in the dead water up to 18 foot when them fish was right on the bottom before, but that, that normally don't happen. Uh, and if you get a good sunshine day, you know, they're, they're going to come up. Uh, as far as the slip knot, I've used the clay beads. I've used everything imaginable. Always had it move on me or had it catch in my eyes. This rod I'm using right now, you guys probably can't see it, but it's got it's got a real small tip on it, a couple small eyes. Uh, most crappie rods do now, that way they're more sensitive. So, anything very big is not going to slide through them. So I just go buy the cheapest wax dental floss I can buy. Just like that. Get you about a four inch, five inch piece of it, and I'll show you guys how to do this here. So here's your basically like that loop or not. I make me a make me a loop. I get get that dental floss wet there so it'll slide a little bit. Just make you a loop in that line. You want to tie where your loop comes together. There's two two lines there. And you're just going to take that dental floss over the two lines and twist that six or seven times. Now, if you've got smaller eyes on your rod than what I have, you might only be able to do it four or five times. And then you're just going to tie you a hard knot in that. Pull your... I haven't done this in a long time, so... You're going to pull your main line tight. I didn't get my braid wet, and it didn't want to slide there. And I'll usually just put a put an extra hard knot in that after I get my two lines tight. That way, that way I know that's not going to come undone. Uh, you can do this in mono too. Uh, run your dental floss right in mono. Cut your pigtails off don't need them and here's what you got you've got a slip knot that is not going to come out will not booger your line up too bad unless you're running like four pound line that'll slide right up and down you and set it whatever depth you want uh i'm not going to get into jig style too much you know i used to make my own jigs the guy used to i was talking about that taught me how to slip cork fish he he made his own jigs now everybody's making their own jigs uh there's lots of good brands out there uh, here's one that I just I just tried the other day on Lake those arcs and them crappie absolutely loved it. That's the brush pile little their little stinger jig in the monkey milk and chartreuse. Uh, I had real good luck with it the other day down there just jigging jigging around docks and uh, some brush piles that was down there. I'm gonna put that on the top because that's gonna be my smaller jig of the of the two that I'm going to put on there. Now, if you're casting for distance, you'll want to put a heavier jig head on the bottom. I ran, when I was throwing down below the dam, trying to throw out four, I ran all the way up to a quarter on that one, and that keeps these two from spinning when you cast. Always run your wider jig on the top. Right now, I'm probably just going to go down there and mess around for a minute, see if I can catch a crappie, show you guys. Uh... I've just got two 16th ounce jigs on here. Uh, seems like most of the crappie have been wanting something a little bit smaller, so <clears throat> I'm running a couple smaller jigs here. This right here, the whole time I was growing up, this was my go-to color. That purple and chartreuse slab buster, uh, <clears throat> which back then it was a slab hunter. That's what Dwayne made. I made him for a long time. Uh, they're, they're the same jig, basically. They, they look the same, same action, everything. Uh, but that was always... And these are do have garlic scent on them. They're really good. I don't think the brush pile's got any scent on it, but that don't matter too much. A lot of the time, during the winter, if the crappie get real finicky, too, I would put on a... a uh, crappie niblet, chartreuse, or glow, or sparkles. It didn't really matter. Uh, but that's only if they're finicky. Most of the time, you didn't need it. I mean, most of the time, they're pretty aggressive. 
But like I said, when you guys make that, if you if you don't want your cork setting sideways like that in the water, put that snap swivel on there, and it'll make that it'll make that cork to where it stands up just perfect. And then then you it, you can see them bites that just barely raise it up or just barely pull it down in the water column. Uh, that's ninety nine. Even some of the crappie trips I ran there a couple weeks ago when I was trying to do the single pole jigging and stuff, most people could not feel the bite. They never knew they had a crappie on until it had them wrapped up around the brush or something like that. So you've got to really pay attention close, really watch that bobber close. Any any movement you see, just like I tell them out on the boat, hook sets are free. Any movement you feel, any movement you see, or if you even think it moves, set the hook on it. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Uh, a lot of time, if you're questioning it being a fish, it was a fish, and by the time you questioned it, it's going to be too late. That's the biggest downfall to, to crappie fish, and a lot of people don't understand. Uh, it Pretty well anybody can get the bites. I, I've sat right, right beside, you know, a lot of different people, and I'd be catching crappie, and they wouldn't be, and it was just because they wasn't seeing the bites. That That's all it was, and sensitivity. You know, they, they've come out... The line has come out so far the last 10, 15 years. You get so much more sensitivity in the line, like with the braid or the nano fill. Or, uh, the big one I used to always use was the Fireline Crystal. Uh, I loved it. It was really sensitive. That was back when it first came out. That was my go-to for, for crappie and walleye. Now, if you're walleye fishing, right now they're catching a lot of walleye down below the dam or starting to. Some pretty good females come up the last week. Uh, if you're running braid on that, I always tie them on a filament leader. They, they are pretty sight sensitive sometimes, so make, make sure you do that mono leader on them. And I've caught a lot of walleye on this slip cork rig right here too. Uh, not very many people do it, but a lot of the time it'll keep you from getting hung up. You know, if, if them walleye are hanging on a ledge that's 12, 14 foot down, you can set that slip cork right on them, and you know when you get up to the ledge, you start to drag bottom just a little bit, wind it in. Uh, my biggest walleye down below the dam was nine pounds. It actually come off a slip cork rig. Guys down there crappie fishing. Uh, I've caught nine pounder off Truman and a nine pounder off Lake of those arcs, and, and both of them come when I was crappie fishing. But uh, and both off the bank. Neither one of them was out of a boat. So, it, it, right now, the biggest thing I'm seeing on Facebook, hearing on the internet, well, I ain't got a boat, well, I, I, I'm limited to the bank, I, or I ain't got live scope. You guys, that stuff is not necessary to catch fish. It is a tool to help you catch fish. Uh, yes, the live scope's awesome. Once you learn it, it, it cuts your time in half of having to find the fish. Uh, but, you know... Half the fun in fishing is figuring it out on your own, finding out what you need to do to catch them. It always was to me because during the wintertime, I could go catch crappie when not many other people was that was limited to the bank. But, you, you know, you've got the rock quarry over there at Sparrowfoot you can walk into. I guarantee you could go over there right now and slip cork a limit of crappie. Probably go down to the harbor, slip cork a limit of crappie pretty easy in there. Uh, the dead water, I know I can catch them in there. I was in there catching them two weeks ago out of the boat that was well within casting distance of the bank. Uh, just Little Tebow, the bluff there by the boat ramp on Little Tebow, that's a good spot. We used to go up on the Grand, I think I think it was up in Otter Creek, we always went in there like February, threw a cork out there, throw it out as far as you can around them trees. You know, we was fishing probably a foot and a half, two foot deep up there just off the bank and we, we caught a ton of ton of big crappie up there. Uh, that's just kind of something everybody sees a live scope and don't think about doing that anymore, but it still it still works. I mean, it ain't going to change. So that, that's about all I've got for you guys today. Uh, get out there and give it a try. I'll probably go out here. It's still snowing right now. I'm probably going to go out in a little bit and try one of them spots I just talked about and see if I can't catch a few crappie with this rig I just tied up. And if I do, I'll post it on Facebook and you guys will get to see it. I appreciate it, y'all. Uh, bait shop's back open every day unless we get snow like today. Uh, I'll be here for a little while this morning and I'm going to go catch some, some crappie somewhere. So, uh, 
We do have all of our snagging stuff in pretty much. Dipsy divers, line, reels, rods. We got everything you need to catfish right now. Uh, and I'll try to do another video on that here. Maybe today or in a few days I'll do one on, on the simplest catfishing rig you can tie up. I've used it my whole life off the bank, out of a boat. No matter what, if there's fish there, it will catch you fish. So, I've had a few guys tell me, like on the Missouri and Mississippi, it don't work that well, but they do catch fish on it. So, I'll show that later on, too. Uh, that's all I've got for you. I appreciate it, y'all. Have a good one, and good luck fishing if you get out there. Thank you.